What is up y'all? So apparently a lot of people had a lot to say about this Jonathan Majors Ebony shoot. It kind of caught me off guard. Let's talk about it. Y'all already know what's going on. Make sure you check my description box for my other YouTube channel. Make sure you check my description box for my Patreon account. We're going to be putting up another episode, a podcast episode up there on Tuesday like we do every single week. Y'all already know what's going on. Just check my description. Now, the reason why I said this whole Jonathan Majors debate and conversation going on on social media caught me off guard is because usually I can tell when close-minded people are about to have a field day on something, right? You know, usually you can tell like, oh, they're about to be ignorant about something. But I mean, I'm telling you, I looked at these pictures so many times. I looked at these pictures of Jonathan Majors so many times and the possibility of this conversation didn't even pop up in my head. You see what I'm saying? I'm just like, damn, that's how... Also, that ASAP Rocky and Rihanna conversation where a lot of people were so mad that on the cover of Vogue, Rihanna was was the one in the front and ASAP Rocky's in the back. They're emasculating our men. I'm just like, wow, I saw that cover and that shit did not even cross my mind one time. And like, that's how, that's really how it feels to be so far removed for, from some of these like, rules about masculinity and femininity and man versus woman da, 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 da. like i did not even imagine this happening but it's happening okay they were over here saying that this picture of jonathan majors oh my goodness is so emasculating look at how he's crossing his legs look at the color that he's wearing um and i guess they talk about his lips too as if jonathan majors don't have naturally like thick ass lips but whatever oh he pursed his lips up they're emasculating our man now i I don't know what makes people think that you're gonna get like you I don't know these theater boys these theater kids like y'all really expect these theater boys to be bastions of traditional masculinity y'all ain't never seen a drama club before or just artists in general like what that's the first thing the second thing is it's like I don't know why y'all are scared of certain colors like literally y'all are looking at the way that someone positions their body and trying to make whole entire discussions about their manhood about their masculinity about like just the way that their legs move on top of another one just based off the colors that they wear it's very very weird how masculinity or the concept or the structure of all this masculinity versus femininity shit is supposed to be so strong and yet the color pink it, 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 yet the color pink and cross legs completely apparently completely shatter all that shit how strong really is it then Jonathan's look was apparently inspired by Do Flamingo from uh, One Piece but that's honestly that's besides the point if Jonathan want to wear fucking pink red whatever the fuck he want to wear he should feel comfortable to wear that shit I don't even I can't even imagine how many young boys colors favorite colors are like something like pink or purple or some shit and they too scared to say some shit like that and that's just colors we're talking about we ain't even talking about like real real deal life issues that men and boys are often socialized to just act like are not happening or to ignore their emotions or shit like you see what i'm saying a lot of people have this idea that you could only exist as a man or whatever in one particular way stuff they try to stuff your ass in a box and i'm just like that's obviously not happening here. So my thing is like, okay, so Jonathan Majors wore pink and crossed his legs and gave y'all a little kiss or something. What's the, what's the worst that's gonna happen? Like, is the color pink gonna cause some type of world ending apocalypse? Like, I really want people to think about that shit. And I've been thinking about that, like, okay, so, Y'all y'all keep talking about y'all been saying this for the longest. And I'm just like, bitch, it's taking a very long time to emasculate all these black men, right? Y'all claim that just some conspiracy to emasculate black men. I'm just like, so what's the end goal? After we then emasculate all the black men, then what's the what's the goal? And I guess someone I saw someone say on social media that the end goal would be population control. So the color pink turns your ass gay? Is that what it is? I don't understand. Population control as if gays can't have kids. That's the first thing. And the second thing, as if your your straight ass can't make a damn baby. Why while wearing pink, while liking the color pink. You, you see what I'm saying? While crossing your motherfucking legs. I don't understand that shit. Does the color pink suck all the madness and masculinity uh, out of your body? Is you crossing your legs, it's gonna completely change the fact that you're, is, you see what I'm saying? Like if you, if this manhood is so strong, why is crossing your legs and wearing pink gonna take all that shit away from you? I don't get that shit. And how are they emasculating him when Jonathan chose to put this shit on and chose to, chose to do the shit, chose to do the shoot, chose to put this shit on and chose to put the shit out? The rules of what's seen as masculine and feminine um, change every damn day. I will always reference the because there was a shift when and earlier on when I was in grade school, there was a shift. Um, you started to see some of the guys, some guys move from really baggy clothes to skinny jeans and shit. 
they were going into the women's section of, of the store to rock some skinny jeans. You see what I'm saying? And now skinny jeans are more of a staple when it comes when it comes to like guys and how they dress, right? So all that, but before it definitely wasn't, right? So all these rules, all that shit don't make no fucking sense. That's why I do what the fuck I want. And I don't know what y'all expected from somebody, and I'm gonna give y'all a couple of instances. Uh, but I don't know what y'all expect from somebody who talks about masculinity like this, okay? Listen to this. The first one is from BET. Um, Jonathan Majors is talking about how he got the role of Nat in The Harder They Fall. The article says, it was one of the first times he didn't have to audition for a role, but he decided to send the director of Harder They Fall some poems, which would be a bit odd and surprising when going out for a role. Uh, Jonathan said, for me, the process of winning a role is me showing you my take on the character. I felt that I needed to express to him my take, Samuel, the director, uh, my take on the character. And so I wrote two poems. One was essentially the rage of Nat Love and the other one was the loss of Nat Love. It was to show him, this is what I'm going to do given the opportunity, I needed him to see me and show him that vulnerability. Jonathan Majors zeroed in on how the masculinity question can cut young boys off from their own full expression. Um, Jonathan Majors said, I'm a black man from Dallas. My voice is supposed to be way down here. I'm not supposed to sing. I'm not supposed to cry. All these things. This is how Jonathan Majors speaking about masculinity. Next one from Discussing Film. Majors was talking about some characters that he played uh, in the past and he said that these characters are quote, corrective and an anecdote to the toxic masculinity. Uh, but particularly a black masculinity that society has put on, in many cases, black men and also the willing chains that me and my compatriots put on ourselves. The limitations we put on ourselves that we must behave a certain way, we must think a certain way. And so these three fellows and finally Atticus allow us to expand that idea of how a black man must act or think. Then from The Hollywood Reporter in 2019, Jonathan Majors was talking about his film, The Last Black Man in San Francisco. Uh, the interview said this to him, it's powerful to see a platonic soulmate relationship between two black men because I've never seen that on film before. And Jonathan responded by saying this, that is what will inspire change because it doesn't have anything to do with challenging their manhood. When we show how intimate Jimmy and Montgomery are, we are actually amplifying that they are human. These men are extremely vulnerable with each other. They do extraordinary things because of the other man. That is a gift. Um, also, in the recent Ebony article that everyone's up in arms about, um, he said, nothing is a monolith, not blackness, not maleness, not comic book villains. So it's like you have this, this guy who's out here, and I think it's because he got muscles, urgh, you know what I mean? He's supposed to be just based off of how he looks and the way that society expects, you know, people who look like him, who, you know, have his attributes. He's supposed to not be saying shit like this. And so when he get on these covers, on these, um, photo shoots expressing himself. If you want to wear something pink, then he wears something pink. If you want to wear something black or blue, whatever the fuck you want to wear. If you want to cross his legs, he want to cross his legs. If you don't want to do that shit, he don't want to do that shit. So when he gets on here showing y'all that he really is, means what the fuck he says about masculinity, it's, it really rubs y'all the wrong way because this this strong, muscle up ass nigga, he ain't supposed to be saying this shit, but he is. But he, but he is. And then I'll leave y'all with this. A lot of the world, a lot of people, we keep having these conversations about how men are trash and you know, they unemotional, they can't express shit. Those are the conversations happening all the time, right? So y'all be wanting men and masculinity to change, but then be pissed when some of these men express themselves, express their masculinity in a different way. Like you want men to change, but when they start changing and expressing themselves and doing different things and not putting themselves in a fucking box, y'all start freaking out. Like, so what's the truth? Toxic masculinity been choking us out for the longest. Even, it, it be choking the men out. In my opinion, men need to know that there are many, many, many ways that they can exist in this world. They don't have to shove themselves in these stoic, unemotional, unexpressive, you know, uninspired ass, violent ass boxes. Like they need to know that they can exist as themselves so they don't go through this world tearing the world, tearing everybody up and tearing themselves up trying to fit in some boxes. That, she, that don't even make no sense. The box of the standards will change in the next five years, in the next 10 years, from, from fashion to how you're supposed to move your body. You know what I mean? How you supposed to sit? Stupid, stupid, and everybody up in arms. So yeah, that's it. That's all I gotta say. Uh, I'm sure my comments gonna be, it's gonna be lit up. 
Uh, but yeah, that was a conversation going on social media. I was just like, girl, before I start, you know, ranting, <laughs> making 10 tweets per second, let me just sit down and make a video, talk about it with y'all, and see what y'all think. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay safe out there and make sure that you have a good goddamn evening. You could blow me, I ain't the only you so lonely, insecure, they don't control me. I ain't the only, press the holy worship me.